Welcome back to Exotic Art Play Place, everyone. Thanks for joining in on this beautiful sunny afternoon. Today we're going to talk about the two primary forced induction styles, turbocharging and supercharging. Which one is actually better? We're going to talk about it now. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Mark with Exotic Art Play Place. And today so initially when the internal combustion engine came out, it needed fuel, air, and spark. We know spark is fairly standard, fuel is somewhat variable, but air is the big factor that can be changed. An engine by design is an air pump. As it compresses, it's compressing the air, S ignites, and then you get that explosion, and that's creating the power. Now by adding more pressure to that engine via supercharging or turbocharging, you're improving the efficiency and you're ultimately increasing the output of that engine. So what type of superchargers are there available in the market and what type of turbochargers? Well, supercharging you can get in a variable, you can get a centrifugal belt-driven supercharger, you can also get PD, positive displacement pumps, like roots, twin screw, as well as Eaton blowers. There's a few different options. Some of them are top mount, some of them are side mount. And with turbochargers, they generally have three different styles. You get full ball bearing, full bushing turbos, or a hybrid, which is a ball bearing and a bushing, because ball bearings do a better job of transferring that efficiency, whereas a bushing's more reliable, more durable, and so often hybrids seem to be the best answer. However, whatever they are, whatever you select for your application, they all generally work conceptually the same way, which is st distinctively different than a supercharger, where a supercharger utilizes the engine crankshaft and the engine speed directly through a belt and it becomes a parasitic loss a turbocharger on the other hand like what we have here utilizes that waste exhaust gas which is gone anyway to actually turn as a prime mover on the exhaust side here it actually turns the turbine thus transferring that velocity through another turbine on the intake side on the cold side into the intake manifold with an increased pressure hence making horsepower so that is the key difference between turbocharging and supercharging one's driven by the belt off the engine crank where turbocharging is just strictly using exhaust gases and is generally far more efficient now due to the increased efficiency you find with turbos generally that's why they're more accepted in today's manufacturing processes and that's why a lot of the manufacturers are strictly going with turbos because they improve the efficiency they satisfy the regulators so what are the obvious drawbacks and benefits of both supercharging and turbocharging obviously they both make horsepower and that's why they're both utilized in different applications albeit turbos are generally more efficient because they're not utilizing any of the engine horsepower to drive them as a prime mover so there's less parasitic loss with a turbo than there is with a supercharger but regardless they both make significant power gains but major advantages of a supercharger are their simplicity of installation and design also on superchargers you rarely need external oiling or coolant as you do with turbochargers. Turbochargers generally get a lot hotter because they're tied directly into your exhaust system. All that exhaust heat transfers through the entire housing and creates a lot of heat. And so you've got to find ways to keep that coolant, that temperature down. Another major benefit to supercharging is that immediate throttle response. When you punch the throttle, the engine responds immediately. There's no lag. Because as the engine RPM spins up, due to the fact that it's connected directly via belt, the supercharger itself turns at the same rate and as a result you're injecting the additional pressure as the rpm increases and the fueling increases and therefore supercharged engines feel much more like a very very large naturally aspirated engine turbo lag as we spoke superchargers have immense Im have immediate on demand power where turbochargers have an inherent lag why is that because the initial spooling comes from the exhaust gases emitted from the vehicle so as you apply throttle exhaust gases start to build up that back pressure and then it transmits through the turbine on the on the hot side and then it ultimately starts to turn the turbine which is connected on the other shaft into the intake thus pressurizing the intake manifold so there's an inherent delay from that buildup to that spinning and spooling to the time it actually increases the manifold pressure so in that time frame there's a lot of lag and depending on the amount of plumbing that the manufacturers create or even the aftermarket tuner kits provide the more plumbing the more pressure it takes to build up and the longer delay it takes so one other benefit is just the sheer modifications needed particularly if you're going aftermarket Often superchargers, if you go with a very low dose, you often don't need to change anything in terms of fueling. You don't need to make a lot of major modifications to accept that additional boost because you can supercharge at a very low boost rating, improve performance, and yet not necessarily exceed the threshold of its thermal limits. Now, what are the benefits to turbocharging like we have here? Well, benefits are 
much more efficient. Again, as I say, you, you're injecting waste exhaust gas through the exhaust turbine half of the turbocharger here, and it results in essentially free power and a much higher potential for huge horsepower comes with a turbocharger. Think of the brands like Porsche and the 911 Turbo or McLaren and the 720s. A lot of these cars with huge power now are going the next level and they're getting there with with turbocharging because turbocharging's limits are a little bit higher you can run a low static engine compression and ex as you accelerate you can add boost retard the timing and get crazy amounts of torque and horsepower out of a turbo engine so the ultimate limits of the turbos like this are a little bit higher typically than you'd find in supercharging and as well another benefit is improved efficiency you're not using engine horsepower so overall drag on the system is almost null all you're doing is turning the prime mover with waste exhaust gas that's coming out of your exhaust system anyway so as you build exhaust gas velocity that starts to turn the prime mover that then on a common shaft off the exhaust side turns the pinwheel on the intake housing, forces compressed air into the intake manifold, thus creating pressure and power. And of course, often it goes through some sort of a cooler or intercooler or something as well to reduce intake temperatures somewhat. That also can give you additional power and reliability. What are some of the drawbacks of turbocharging? Well, coolant to go through them, so that's extra plumbing and potential for leaks and maintenance. You've also got requirements for oil. Almost every turbocharger requires oiling externally. Bring oil in, take oil out in a scavenge system. So it's especially important you do your oil changes on turbocharged cars, even more so. The demand is far more than it would be on a normally aspirated or naturally aspirated engine, even more so than on a supercharged engine. As well as if you're going aftermarket, an obvious drawback is the fact you have to retard the timing on boost you also have to consider extra fueling particularly on boost you have to consider camshaft timing you don't want to have a lot of lift and you don't want to have a lot of overlap because those are conditions that can be counterproductive and dangerous to your engine so what's a drawback on supercharging well there's limits and there's power limits with supercharging primarily because of its static compression ratio even at lower rpm when you're driving and you say you decide to hammer the throttle at 1500 rpm the engine has to be able to take that and as a result the system has to be designed and engineered in such a way that you don't over boost an engine under a heavy load condition or a very low rpm or you can destroy that engine you can blow it apart so the restrictions have to be put in place that you don't over compress the air going into the engine. So they do have their limits. So the choice is really yours. Are you looking for ultimate top end power or are you looking for drivability for the street? Turbochargers are getting better today with variable vane systems, twin scroll turbos that can reduce turbo lag. But the fact of the matter is turbocharging lag is still exists. And that's where superchargers work typically better on the street. They're also very engaging. They're very exciting to drive a supercharged car. With that said, turbocharged cars provide more opportunity for ultimate power. So if you're going drag racing or you're just looking for that top end horsepower, you want that Autobahn destroyer, the turbos likely the way to go so thanks a lot for sticking around to the end guys hey if you have a preference or a particular application i'd love to hear about it i'm very intrigued about what you guys are deciding to go with as well if you just want to hear more from exotic car play place don't forget to hit that subscribe button over there and the notifications bell lets you know when the next video is out and i hope to catch you real soon on the next one see you then bye bye